It's noon on Friday, November 12th, and this is the news that you can use from YAA. From coming from three locations today, I know at the moment you think it's only two, but trust me, folks, from three locations all the way from West Virginia, Bethesda, Maryland, and Ventnor, New Jersey, it's the team of Zach, Ray, and the F&I Goddess. Come on, come on, come on. Line. There it is. Yes. Pops, I think someone's at the door. Can you let him in? <gasps> there she is herself. And for those of us that are on the stream, I'm going to remove myself really quick. We're going to get you in the middle, Miss Kimberly Klein. I'm determined. Oh, oh, okay. Let's do it. There we go. I'm, I'm much more comfortable. <laughs> ah, there we go. <laughs> and I apparently the three of us are two weeks early for Black Friday. Yes. <laughs> we are ready. We are ready for it, Ray. We As are. As always. Yes. Well, guys, it's great to have both of you here. Pops, thank you for that intro. I was wondering, I was wondering if we were ever going to do the show today. I thought it could just be all intro. That could have been a 30. It could have gone. Could have kept going. I, I could I could probably stretch it out the I was gonna say that we could do that, right? Yeah. <laughs> Easy. We've got Mark here in the chat saying he's ready, he's ready, he's ready. Uh, justice is here. Miss Melissa M up from Boston area, Massachusetts. Thank you for being here, Melissa. Bobby's here. Vincent's here. Guys, we've got a fun show ahead of us today. I wanted to go a little bit back to the basics. Christopher is in here as well. Uh, hardcore weather. Any Yah Black Friday specials? Maybe. We should be thinking about that. Um, I want. <laughs> oh, U.S. Infantry Soldier over on Twitch. we got to respect the Twitch. Oh, thank Guys, you. Here's what I'd like to do. I'd like to go back to the basics today. Over the past couple of weeks, we've become more aware of a few different tactics from dealerships to be really creative in how they um, uh, drive home a car deal or just take, they're getting creative. They're getting creative. I don't want to call it anything nefarious or bad, but they're getting creative. I want to go back to the basics. We had a video that we had done a while ago with you, Miss Kimberly Klein, that talked about kind of like the questions you need to ask at a dealership, the information you need to be armed with so that you can kind of, you know, honestly be defensive in your buying and so that you can be informed. I thought we'd have that type of conversation today, guys, and, and honestly touch on some of the new things we're seeing as well, like that extra uh, refund agreement and dealerships who aren't selling cars unless you have finance with them, all those fun things. So does that sound good to both of you? Um, well, since it's your show, yes. <laughs> I'm it's just our show. <laughs> it, it's <laughs> you're the director. Yes, that well, sounds then, great. Well, then I will direct over to you, Miss Kimberly Klein. What are some of the things that car buyers in today's market need to be aware of, kind of heading into the dealership? Some of those key words or key phrases, key thoughts. I think that's good thinking. Like your thoughts of let's go back to the basics. Because there are so many new creative things by dealerships being thrown at us. Yes, let's go back to the basics. So let's use some terms. Remember buy rate. What is buy rate? Buy rate is the interest rate that comes over on the approval to the finance manager before they mark it up. Use the terms. If you use the terms automatically, something snaps in a dealership uh, uh, employee's brain that says they know what they're talking about. So use some terms like buy rate. When you go into the finance office, you get a what? You get a, a menu like you're at the diner <laughs> and you get a menu. Well, what's the first thing you want to ask on a menu, Ray? When you get the menu and if, if I'm the finance manager, Ray, and I say, okay, here's your payment with all these wonderful things, protections, sign here. The first thing I would want to ask, well, what, what's, what's my base payment before you started adding all this stuff? Uh, what's my base payment with zero added to it? Oh, base payment, you say? Yes. And then, of course, I have to, as the finance manager, find it because it's in teeny, teeny, <laughs> tiny fine print somewhere on the menu. Your base payment, it must be on there. Eight point font, I believe, is the maximum allowed to show your base payment. <laughs> That's the maximum allowed, right? <laughs> um, and, and of course your buy rate. And so if I'm going to go down through all the protection plans that are available for you, like tire and wheel, key care, maintenance plan, VSC, all those wonderful little things. Um, I, I actually spoke to a gentleman just a couple of days ago on one of my consult calls, you guys, 
who said, well, Kimberly, can you figure it out? It's like $50 a month, they quoted me. Oh, well, what's that tell you? He did not ask for the breakdown of each specific protection package. You got it. Yeah. So all those things, yes, finance manager is going to show them to you in a payment, but you want to know what's the actual price of that VSC? What's the actual price of a maintenance plan? And here's something that I've been hearing a lot of lately. Hmm. There are VSC companies out there online, like maybe Endurance, CarShield, CarTex, those. But they're bundling and they're just saying, this VSC includes maintenance. Let me tell you something, folks. There is no VSC out there that includes maintenance. So even if you're working with a company that's not in the dealership, you want to ask the same question. Well, if it includes maintenance, then I want to know what is the actual price of that maintenance plan? What is the actual price of the vehicle service contract? Because those are two different things. I don't know if you saw it back in the community forum, Pops or Kimberly. There was actually a gentleman. He had uh, he was he leased a vehicle, had bought a service contract on that, and then was super confused about like what he purchased and what he paid for. And there's so much opportunity in a finance office for extra profit to be made. Selling a service contract on a lease generally doesn't make sense unless you know you're going to buy it out at the end because the vehicle's under the manufacturer's warranty. And what stood out to me about his post on the community forum is he was asking, well, can I go get new brake pads and maybe an alignment and new wiper blades? And will the VSC that I bought cover it? And I replied back, I'm like, no. Like, there, there, there's, a, there's a difference between maintenance and and um, vehicle service contract. The vehicle service contract takes care of, of uh, things that go wrong with the vehicle that are, are major, the covered components. It doesn't take care of, it requires you to maintain your vehicle to the standards either set by the vehicle service contract company or the manufacturer of the vehicle. Because to help prevent things from breaking, you need to maintain your vehicle. And, and a maintenance program is completely different than a mechanical breakdown protection program via a, a vehicle service contract. Um, and, and I know when I was at the mini store, I mean, there's two things that, that every mini finance manager goes over. And they do have a maintenance plan that runs uh, 72 months, 100,000 miles that covers every scheduled maintenance on, on your mini during that time frame. But that is not to be confused with a vehicle service contract that recovers ma covers uh, major repairs uh, when there's failure of parts that happen in a vehicle. Bingo. We've got a question here from the chat. Any way to skip the scary F and I people and have it shipped to my door? And I think this is a really great question. Great question because there are more and more vehicles that are being factory ordered, new cars being ordered. Is there a way, Miss Kimberly Klein, to avoid the scary F and I office and avoid having to ask some of these questions, uh, or is everyone going to have to to face the light at some point and, and head into that office? Yes, everybody has to face it at some point. It is part of compliance. But with that said, there are new ways that it's happening today and that's virtually uh it's done via email um maybe like a skype or a google meet kind of thing because it's compliant you have to a hundred percent of buyers have to be offered and have things explained to them a hundred percent of the time and it's really fascinating because there's so much energy and like excitement about the Carvanas and the Vrooms of the world. And we've done a bunch of videos on like Vroom, for example, right now with the Better Business Bureau, there's a, a warning out to consumers because you're A, not 100% sure what car you're going to get in terms of its quality. Uh, that's been a, an issue and a concern. They're being dropped off at night at times and you don't see it. Yeah. Another concern are the title and registration issues. These companies uh. are growing so fast that they don't even have the titles in hand and the, as they're selling these vehicles. I didn't share it with either of you guys, but I put it actually up on, on TikTok of all places. There was a video, this woman recorded as her, um, her boyfriend or husband's truck was getting taken by the police. They bought it from Carvana a week earlier. It turns out they bought a stolen car. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. 
And the issue was that Carvana never had the title of the registration. The car was freaking stolen. Oh it's, my we've god! Got people in the chat saying, like, you know, just skip the dealership. Don't go to the dealership. These other upstart companies, like, eventually they'll tidy these things up. Mm -hmm. But knock on wood, you probably aren't going to run into that type of experience at a dealership. You just have to go talk to the scary F and I manager. Yeah, yeah, that's where your title department. Um, boy, they're just so important to have good, super smart employees in the title department that know what the heck they're doing. And the, what you just mentioned, they didn't do their due diligence whenever they threw this all together and I, get the I, right people to do it. And I can tell you the people that I worked for, the last group that I worked for, um, if you didn't have the title or registration to your car, we would not trade it in. We would mm -hmm. offer you a buy figure. So that when you got the title and registration, you could bring the car to us and we would buy it for the agreed upon number. Um, if you had, if, if there was a loan, uh, we, we would not even consider selling the car until we got the paid off loan from a uh, title from the bank. Uh, I mean, there's just. There's processes. There, these are processes there, that you're describing. Yes that has to be yeah followed and, and a lot of dealerships just you know well he said he'll bring me the title tuesday yeah well he didn't say which tuesday he just said yeah. tuesday okay and and so sometimes you know dealerships end up waiting three four five weeks to get a title um for for the vehicle that they traded and it, in the meantime they've reconditioned it they put it out on the lot for sale they they've sold it and yet they still haven't gotten the title to put it into their name. And technically, they are not supposed to sell it until the vehicle has been titled in the dealership's name. Um, so, yes, obviously Carvana, um, Vroom, some of the others out there, they're skirting some of these rules and regulations. Um, and that's because there's so much money to be made at the moment that, that for them, it's worth the risk. Yeah. And quickly, quick money. Oh, God, yeah. And you avoid some of these things that we're saying are happening at dealerships. I want to comment on one thing that I just saw in the chat, and then I want to bring the conversation back to some of the trends that we're seeing uh, in the industry right now. So <laughs> it's a hard time to buy a car. We acknowledge that. But first, I want to hit on this. Milo in the chat says, Tesla just raised their prices again, LOL. While you guys were just chit-chatting, I did a quick Google search. They did. They just raised their prices again. No way. This is, oh, this my is God. This morning, Tesla increases Model Y prices again as new incentives are coming. There's another oh. $1,000 price increase on the Model Y. That takes it up to it's now $10,500 in price increases on the Model oh. Y year over year. That's what if Toyota what? did that. Yeah. If Subaru did that. If anyone did that, we'd be like outraged. Yes, but it's but it's Elon, and there's there's no dealer markup. Okay, it's just right. Elon's markup. Okay, right. <laughs> Elon, thanks, Elon, thanks. Yes, Elon has figured out a way to do additional dealer markup and just just doing additional manufacturer markup. Okay, yes. um, and 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 he does it, and and people don't seem to care. They just go, "Oh, it's a Tesla. You get to avoid the dealer." Okay, doesn't mean they're still not ripping you off. <laughs> at at Tesla, it's not ADM, it's AEM. Additional Elon markup. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Wait right. for it. Wait for it. Uh, <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I just saw in the chat we had to pull it up. All right. So Crazy. Let's, let's say we're not buying a Tesla. Okay. And let's say we're not um, going to Carvana, CarMax, Froome. Okay. We want to buy a new car. Some of the things that we've seen recently, guys, it's concerning. These are the creative ways dealerships are finding to extract more dollars out of people's pockets. We had on the show earlier this week, uh, Kimberly, we talked about a lease return in the state of Florida where uh, they were going to buy the lease out. And it was a uh, in the state of Florida, you have to do that through a dealership and also through GM Financial, you have to do it through the dealership. And it was $3,000 in fees. That was like mm -hmm. a, what the, a WTF moment. We've talked about it a few times this week, and I want to get your take on it. We had a gentleman back in the YA community forum. He bought a Toyota 4Runner, got an awesome discount on it, 
the reason that he got the awesome discount was because he had to take the man, uh, the uh, the dealership's financing, which we've heard of this before. Yeah. The issue with this one was the dealership made him sign a side letter, like an addendum agreement, essentially mm -hmm. saying that if he fulfilled the loan, aka paid it off or refinanced it, that the dealership would then come back after him for thousands of dollars in their chargeback. It was the first time either of you had seen that. And we've got dealerships nowadays saying in the states of, of Texas and elsewhere, if you're not going to finance with us, can't buy the car from us. If you're not going to trade in a car to us, you can't buy a car from us. Oh my God. What are your take? What's your take on all of this, Kimberly? How do you feel about this and how can consumers protect themselves? My cookies are frosted. Uh, let's say that, okay? Because it makes me crazy. And and now, it. you remember we? my cookies were frosted whenever they took products out of the finance office and stuck them on the front and made you buy them. Well, my gosh, I never in a million years thought it could get bigger than this. It was called a discount refund agreement, Zach, uh, for our guy in the community, Roger. Um, Just to give a little update there for everyone yeah. who's been following this, uh, Roger contacted Toyota Motor Financial and they had no clue about a discount refund agreement. So he got confused there. He ultimately ended up contacting, I want to get the department correct. Let me see here. He filed a formal complaint with the Idaho State Department of Finance. Um, right. Some details about the agreement. So we'll see what actually comes from that. I'll put the link to the community post in the chat in case anyone wants to, to, to look at that. But I mean, he had that go to his state department of finance uh, uh, yes i mean as he should too so in that case and i would like to get ray's take on this too um what's really happening behind the scenes here is they're again forcing the consumer forcing the buyer into keeping the loan so that they don't get hit on a chargeback um so they're going to mark up the interest rate probably two points which is max they're probably going to mark that up and they're telling him that he's got to keep the loan for six months and and he's going to get a discount on the vehicle for doing this. So you really have to weigh out what you're going to pay in interest for that period of time. you got to do some extra work on this, guys. Um, the mere fact that they have created this and literally it's a piece of paper that says you have to do this and you have to sign it. My biggest question here is what comes first? Does the fact that there is no prepayment penalty, which is stated on your contract, on your bank contract, come before that piece of paper that a dealership puts together that says, you must keep this loan for X period of time before you refinance it or pay it off. That's simply so that the dealership or the finance department doesn't take that charge back hit on the rate spread between buy rate and whatever they sold you their interest rate for, which on $45,000, I can promise you is over $2,000, probably in the range of 25 to $2,800. That's a, that's a lot of money. I, I have, you know, I, I'm the old one here and, and was actively in the business for 43 years. I have never in my life seen anything like this. Um, but it is a testament to the creativity of the people that are employed in the automobile, in the retail automobile segment. Um, these are some of the most creative uh, people you will ever encounter. They can come up with different ways, different, different verbiage to convince you that this is the way it has to be. And who in their right mind is going to go, well, let's test this out in court. Who's going to spend the money to see mm. if it's actually legal? A consumer's not. Um, you know, and, and the dealership is counting on the fact that the consumer won't. But there, it, it is just, it's, it's abhorrent that they could think of these things and, and actually put together what looks to be like a binding legal style document. And, and we don't know whether it is or it isn't. Um, the, big, the big issue here, because I actually posted about this. I know, I know, I know, on TikTok. That yeah, video, guys, yeah. in two days has over 200,000 views. So a lot of people are becoming aware of this thing. And I wanted people. I want, we want people. Sure. To the takeaway, the kicker here, and there's some confusion, and let's, let's disambiguate it. It is very common for a dealership to say to you, if you want the discounted price, selling price on the vehicle, you've got to finance through us. We've been hearing that for a long, long time. And now when it's, we're in such a, a, a supply demand imbalance, it's happening even more frequently. Great. 
that loan that you get placed into and that you agree to and you sign a contract on, that has stipulations about if there's a prepayment penalty. Mm -hmm. If you were to pay off the loan early, if there is or if there isn't. Most loans in the United States and in a lot of states, it's actually, you can't even have it. There, there are fewer and fewer prepayment penalties. Right. We understand and we know that financing that's placed through a dealership, if, if it's done at a, a maybe like a subvented rate or a special rate, there could be a chargeback if that loan is um, uh, paid off. The issue here is that this side agreement was drafted and essentially put the burden back on the consumer and kind of tied their hands. The reason this story even came to be, Roger, who was the gentleman, he did the math. He did the math. He said, even at 5.99%, it's worth taking this major, I think it was like a $5,000 discount, because in six months, I'll refinance down to my credit union's 2.9. He did the math, checked out. The issue was the Toyota 4Runner he bought had uh, messed up, uh, what was it, the suspension or the drivetrain? There was a major issue with the vehicle. Right. In the first 15 days of ownership, he had only driven it for two days. So he's mm -hmm. now thinking to himself, well, I want to get out of this car. I want to go buy something else. Oh, wait, I can't go just sell it to Carvana yes. or Broom, which in this market, again, is actually like crazy that you could have bought a new car. Two weeks later, you don't like it. You could sell it. You'd break even or make money. Yeah. So that's crazy. But his hands are tied because if he breaks that contract, that agreement that he just signed, even though there's no prepayment penalty to the bank, there's <laughs> the prepayment penalty to the dealership. Yep. That is some really, 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 really major. There's not a big enough bowl to make that much poop. There's not. There's not. It makes me sick, quite frankly. It just makes me sick. And and really, when you get down to it, it's just the tip of the iceberg in in the things that are going on at dealerships that are forcing consumers, if they want to buy a vehicle, to have to agree to certain things that in normal times, A, would never be asked of the consumer, and, and B, uh, wouldn't be thought of as being legitimate. Um, but today, uh, you know, all the, all the various uh, protection packages, or my favorite, the Central Florida Friends and Family Package, mm -hmm. um, you, you know, that, that are just bogus BS um, that they add to the selling price of the car on top of their additional dealer markup that they're asking for. But people have to remember that when, when a dealership asks for an additional dealer markup, that's all it is. It's an ask. It doesn't mean that it can't be negotiated. Okay. Or that you can't try to negotiate it. Now, many dealers will say to you, okay, well, no, we won't discount it. Okay, then go find a dealer that will. And I realize it's more and more difficult to do that. But mm -hmm. it is better to do that or to delay or postpone what it is you're trying to do than, oh, Sophie's back, than to, uh, than to acquiesce to the dealer's BS demands that you do this or you do that or that you have to purchase this or that in order to buy the vehicle. Just... It's a two-letter word. Just say no. Yeah. Okay. And and just just walk out. It's the it it, it it's the only way that I can think of where if enough people do that, it will impact sales and it will force dealers to become more reasonable again. Even though even though supply is short. Dealerships, as we know, are making more money than they ever have, selling fewer and fewer vehicles, okay? So the way to stop that is to stop buying cars. What's that website again, Zach? Yeah, yeah, what is that again? Yeah. Stopbuyingcars.com. I think I, I, I like where you're going, Pops, but I would just wave the flag and I'd say, let's just protect against normalizing this behavior. Like, we recognize at, at YAA, we are not, we're not crazy. Like we get it. We get what's going on. Oh yeah. We have to in, like, make sure people are informed and empowered and not making decisions that they feel like they got taken advantage of. Like, and we can't normalize these things. That's my biggest fear is that if, if we start to normalize the additional dealer markups or the sale of finance products and insurance products on the front end of a car deal, like that's just really not advantageous for the consumer's pocketbook and their wallet and and our objective and our goal is to make sure that you're not getting taken for an extra thousand dollars or twenty five hundred dollars because you bought some things you didn't really understand 
Um, that's really our end game here. Well, I, it is our... I think that, yeah, we can't normalize it. We can't say that this is the way dealerships should and do operate. No. Um, yeah. We, and we and really as we... Remind... Go ahead, Kimberly. I'm sorry. It's just, we have talked before about, no, we don't want to normalize anything like this, but we do want to make you aware of how this works and the questions to ask. For example, before you go and try and force me into these products on the front end, I want to see a contract. And then I'm going to show the, I'm going to put it back on the dealer and I'm going to say to the dealer, Hey, there's this, um, you know, this thing right here that says that you don't have to purchase this i'm not required to get this whatever it is etch we want to empower yeah you can turn around and walk away and in roger's case if 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 the dealership offered me in this market a vehicle of five thousand dollars under anything else wow that's really enticing yeah i want that deal there's a right way to do it. As I think the last time I was on, there's a right way a dealership can do this. And there is the wrong, wrong, wrong way to do it. The wrong way is to print up that piece of paper. The right way to do these things is ask the customer, do you want additional products? Would you like to have this? Here's how much it is. There's a right way and a wrong way. 100%. 100%. I saw in the chat here, guys, this comes from Tim in Florida. He shows he shows us some love in some of our videos. 500 markup on service contract, worse than the dealer, ridiculous. So I'm going to use this moment to, Tim, thank you. So yes, here at YAA, we sell extended warranties. We sell vehicle service contracts. You can go back to the website. And I am actually so proud of our $500 markup. I don't know if I shared this with you Kimberly, but I know my dad experienced it because we drove home uh, or drove, we drove from the Jersey Shore back to Maryland. I actually went through and I'm not going to name names, but I went to a company that maybe that's their name. And I went to another could company be. where mm -hmm. maybe this is their name. And I went on their websites and I actually requested quotes from them. Um, uh -huh. And I encourage everyone to give this a shot. I encourage you to get a quote from us. Just test it out. You could just test it out even. And a quote from them. The amount of phone calls that you get from uh, uh, companies that you didn't even give your information to. So I, I, I filled out for endurance and car checks and I started getting phone calls from complete car care and simple or super car care was another one. I start getting phone calls from brokers and I got multiple. So I called car checks back because I missed their phone call. It took me 10 minutes, but I got a quote for this, this, this car that I was testing. Not only was ours cheaper, but I got the car, fat, car checks one, and then through one of the brokers, I got another car checks quote that was undercutting the other car checks quote I got. And I, it's just like the amount of – so, Tim, yes, Tim. we make 500 bucks. We're not trying to fight a dealer on this. We're just trying to give people options that aren't as like convoluted, screwed up, effed up, and where you can actually get some advocacy and support. What's up, Pops? May I ask a question? If they fill out the form on the joinyaa.com website in regards to an extended service contract, mm -hmm. will they get a call from anybody if they didn't ask for one? No. Uh, you're kidding me. Tim, you are wrong, man. I would rather pay 10x at the deal. No, like the point isn't what? necessarily even just rights. It's empowerment and not being treated like <laughs> crap. Oh my yeah. God, Tim, if you would rather spend 10 times the money, then go for it, buddy. You spend that money. And while you're at it, I could use a little extra money too, if you're going to just throw it, you know, go ahead. But uh, man, um, as a former finance manager in dealerships for over 15 years, Tim, I promise you that these things are marked up thousands of dollars. You're getting the same exclusionary policy, the same coverage. We just don't mark it up thousands of dollars. So all I can say is if you want to, dealers are regulated, not you two people. Okay. Tim, we if, have if a you... reputation that we're trying to build, man. Like, and, and that'll be the last comment I pulled from Tim, but like, yeah, we are literally trying to build something that, that empowers people through this process that has traditionally been so it's like the polar opposite. And it's just, it's frustrating because we're real. We've been coming on this show for two years now. Kimberly's a part of it. Phil's here. Like, Phil's a real human being. We're Phil. real human beings. Here, can I help you with this? Tim works for a dealership. Oh. Okay. It's just oh, that. Oh, thank okay. you, Ray. 
Oh you, my god. You know the 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 wonderful thing about YouTube and social media is people can remain anonymous. Okay? I don't even know that Tim is Tim, but my guess is anybody that anybody that would be fighting that strongly and saying I would pay 10 times more at a dealership. <laughs> go than for I it, from man. IAA is obviously somebody that works at a dealership. Oh, gee, is it Jeannie? That's a wonderful. <laughs> yes. This is a great market for Tim. Uh, yeah. No, and here, let's actually explain. So like RM saying, are you able to offer extended warranties in Massachusetts yet? No, Massachusetts and uh, California are mechanical breakdown insurance states. So I actually need to, you have to pass in your home state, your insurance license uh, test, and then you can get uh, uh, approval to sell in another state. Then you also have personal liability in those states. So then you have to get indemnified by your employer. So like the steps for us to be able to, because if I get sued, I really don't personally want to get sued. I'd rather the company get sued. Um, and so the like those are the steps RM, and that's why it's taken so long as I got to study up and I got to pass an insurance license test here in the state of Maryland before we can even sell any of those. So anyway, that's that's a peek behind the curtain. Of what yeah, there are flaming, about. fiery hoops that we have to jump through first to get there. Don't forget about that. But do remember, you are covered. If, you, if you're if you in yes. South Carolina and you purchase an extended warranty from YAA and you travel to Massachusetts, or even if you move to Massachusetts, you're still covered. We just can't sell to a registered vehicle in the state of Massachusetts or California. So Pops, Kimberly, kind of coming to a close here. We're in an environment where buying a car, leasing a car, terribly challenging, terribly difficult. There are still like kind of, I'm going to call it the, the fundamentals, like the X's and O's that you need to know if you're going into this process. And then there's kind of like some new audibles that we're seeing out there. Some of these like Ex, you know, ancillary agreements, um, uh, different practices that are getting a little creative to, to put um, uh, products in, up front and, and kind of trying to get into your pocketbook. Do you have any parting shots for car buyers that are out there that are going through this process? Like even, whether it's vows of confidence that you can like, stay firm or thoughts about how they can continue to protect themselves? Yes, I say stick to some terminology. I'm telling you, it makes all the difference in the world. If you walk into a dealership and you drop a couple of terms, like hold back. Not a lot of people know what hold back is. Am I right, Ray? Sure. Or or like buy rate or the menu process. Um, and it doesn't take a whole lot. You don't. We're not asking you to be rocket scientists here or get a degree in the finance office. No, just know a couple of terms. Watch YA, join the community see what other people, you can be a lurker, be a lurker in the community. Um, and I promise you when you walk into the dealership and you just drop a couple of terms, it changes the table. And, and, and to carry on with that, um, I believe we have a glossary of terms of, of the jargon of the lingo from the yeah. dealerships, um, that's available on the website, read it. So you have a better understanding of what you're about to encounter. And, and ultimately, search outside of your normal market area. If you can, if you cannot find a dealership in your market area that is that is um, willing to work with you in reducing some of the fees that they're asking for, or wiping them out altogether, or or if you can't find a dealership that would negotiate the additional dealer markup, well, then it it it. I know it's more difficult, but Go outside your market area and see if you can find one. Uh, there are pockets of the country where dealers are not as um, greedy uh, as they are in some, or in some other parts of the country, and you need to try and find those. Uh, but ultimately, the power rests with the consumer because the consumer has the strongest two-letter word available in the English language that I know of, and that is N-O, no. Okay. And ultimately, perhaps the dealerships will acquiesce to a certain degree. Well said, Pops. Well said, Kimberly. Scott, thank you for the kind contribution. Car dealers seem to have thought they'd rather have a customer one time rather than a customer 10 times. We're definitely experiencing and seeing that right now. The industry is definitely in flux. Uh, this whole inventory shortage is, is likely going to change things for a long time moving forward would be my expectation because the consumer experience with the dealership has just been even, even more meh than it was before. I agree. I see yeah. two comments, if I if I may. Yeah, Jack. yeah. 
Michael A said, study up on Deal School and you won't be a noob. I like that. Deal and School 2.0 is coming out likely in another couple of weeks. It's in James who does our yes. video editing. It's in his hands. So if you're watching That's this, James, Deal School 2.0, <laughs> can't wait. <laughs> go James, go James. And then the one before that, uh, I think it's Tida Hunter. Yeah. If it helps, practice the F and I conversation with a friend or relative. Wow. I mean, like that's so good, you guys. That's a night a role play makes all difference. It gives you confidence. I it's love, fun. Have a yeah. glass of wine. I love role playing. It's a great time and it helps you really get in the zone. I'm in. Let's go. Let's do it. Cool. Yes. Well, maybe next stream we can do something. Anyway, thank you guys. Appreciate you being a part of this as always. Um, thank you everyone who's a part of uh, the YAA community. Join YAA.com. And Tim, we actually have a special membership option for you. It's $999 to get one day oh. access. He'll be in. He. I don't even know if he'll go for that though. You might need to put a one in front of that. Yeah. $1,999, Tim. That's actually our doc fee. <laughs> yes. Thanks, and we're guys. not in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> See you soon. Thanks, Zach. Thanks, Kimberly. Thank Have you. Have a good Bye, weekend, guys. everyone. Bye. Yep. Yes. Bye. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.